Hi, my name is Summer Piep Ta, but people mainly know me as Piep. The uh, mediums that I use to paint in is uh, mainly black ink or black paint. I was born here in Auckland. My mum's Cambodian and my father's from Tiamudu. My name's Sophia Minson. I'm a self-taught artist. I've been painting with oils on canvas for the last five years. On my father's side, he's mostly English. And on my mother's side, we've got Ngāti Poro heritage as well as um, Irish and Swedish. And I work from my studio, which is my home in Glen Innes. The difficulties with the treaty is that people have made it unnecessarily complex. The Crown, for example, has deliberately tried to complicate it so that it becomes a preserve of an elite of lawyers or judges and so on. When you actually look at any treaty, it's simply about relationships. So my name is Ingrid Hugens. It's Hogens in Dutch. Um, both my parents um, came here in the 1950s to Auckland. They came here the way a lot of more recent migrants have done, feeling quite clear that New Zealand's a bicultural country and expecting to interact with Māori culture and coming in with probably the rudiments of a treaty in their minds and then arriving to find a British colony. Today I feel full to the brim with new information and it's sort of digesting right now. Um, I feel so fortunate because we were taken into another time, another space, and for the first time in my whole life I was actually very methodically given an explanation of how people in that time, Māori, used to see, or still see, the world. My Ngāti Puro um, whakapapa on my, through my mother's side has been very intriguing to me because I wasn't brought up in a Māori setting and it was my grandmother's generation who were told do not speak Māori and do not go to the marae and things like that and um, it's actually been up to everyone of our generation to regain that connection with our heritage, with the land. I was just amazed the fact that there's two completely different translations mm. of, the, of the treaty and, and also the fact that there is mm. a deep pain right, right there and, and I think a lot of non Māori in, in New Zealand in general kind of dismiss it, you know, because there, there, there is no, they don't have the understanding of it, and it's like, ah, oh, you know, that's in the past. My dad's from New Zealand, and he's got a farm upbringing. When he was 21, he had enough of the farm. He went into Southeast Asia and pretty much never left, um, but that's where he met my mum. My mother's Cambodian, an English teacher in the capital of Cambodia. And then they got married. And like a few months later was uh, when the Khmer Rouge had, had entered into the capital. All this crazy stuff happened and uh, lots of my mum's uh, aunties and uncles were all murdered. You know, she lost her, her parents. It was a mass genocide. I was born in New Zealand, but for me that's always affected me in some ways. I mean, I can't speak Cambodian, but that has had an impact on my view on the world and also, you know, the way I, I paint. For me, I want to, to reach out to, to that culture side of what's part of my blood, really. This is the Po representing the Ngāti Poro Waka Porota. Moana Jackson said, ah yes, this is from your ancestors, this is from um, Ngāti Poro, and it's representing your waka. I guess all my ancestry is from people from all, all over the world. I'm trying to think how I would reference that into the work with Sophia. And I think, you know, the way I'd do that would be through probably symbolism. You know, I didn't want to necessarily take, you know, the, the, the designs, you know, that I see that, that represent, like, Māori culture. I didn't want to just take that. You know, I had to do something where 
I'll get the inspiration from the designs or the feeling, but also interpret it in my own way. Because that, that's kind of what I do when I reference designs from Cambodian culture. You know, I don't necessarily lift it off exactly. I, I interpret how, how it works for me. And, and I, I, I discover it through, that's how I discover it, through art. Remember this place, eh, is, is the Kui Tolus, is Tauranga Waka. It's a place where the wakas came to land. And so it's any waka that comes. So your, your people are on a waka too, if you like. We really want to represent that freedom of all peoples and like a mixture of everybody's histories interweaving. Seeing the pod has definitely influenced me because I think part of especially the Ngāti Pro one, will be the subject of the painting. That's why the Po were put there by these people, I think, to let our people find stories and ways of looking at things, so that's cool. <laughs> no, look, it's your piece of artwork as well. aside your swords um, and experience that vastness together. <laughs> it's the sacred sound that brings in light, purifies, protects and connects with God. Universe functioning as a whole unit. There's somewhere where it's symbolic somewhere, you know what I mean? Like oh people God. are looking and they find it. Could be in the mouth. Hmm? Could be in the what? Because it's the sacred sound of the universe. And that is spewing out the sound of the universe. <laughs> You're like, <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> <laughs> issues are so complex from a mind point of view and everything's so symbolic I wanted to have at least one symbol that overcomes all of that complication so um, I've chosen the Om symbol the Sanskrit Om um, to be in the mouth as the voice of the universe coming through. Sophie has actually used the Om uh, which is you know comes from the San Sanskrit writing well, it comes from India and a lot of 
influence actually in Cambodian culture comes from India as well. So it's quite interesting that Sophia's, you know, added that as well. If you know what that symbol is, or if you can get a sense of that, um, the meaning of that symbol through the work, then um, perhaps you'll feel a bit of that vastness and be able to transcend all these, um, these worries, because it shouldn't be a worry. We're just trying to educate because we've just been educated too. <laughs> um, so we're trying to share some of that knowledge, but also say, hey, don't worry about it, it's okay. You know, everything's one in the end. So, you know, peace. I envision this as the body of the Naga snake, like which in, in Cambodia is um, like a symbolic, uh, like kind of symbolizes lots of things. It uh, can symbolize uh, the universe. Um, and how it protects people, uh, protects the Buddha. But also on, on the body of the Naga, you know, I, I put like the lotus flower, or my own interpretation of the lotus flower. And over here is like uh, the jasmine flower. Well, jasmine's sort of used a lot. I know in ceremonies in, in Cambodia. Um, and that could be just, you know, just for welcoming pe people because it is dealing with immigration. So I thought, you know, that'd be a nice touch to, to bring into the work. We stayed up until 2 a.m. that night. Yeah, so the next night we stayed up all night as well, just um, like literally all night and then the next day. Had five hours sleep for the weekend. To ensure everything is finished on time, I had to keep, well, both of us had to keep painting. It's a lot of small detail. It looks like it's not much done, but it was actually a lot of work. You know, so it's kind of your mind and your body kind of battling each other and, and it's quite hard because sometimes you just have to you know put it on the line and, and paint through the night to, to have things ready it's a lot of progress but just need the, those extra hours to you know you know to complete it yeah oh well oh high five <laughs> When we left Waitangi, Pierp and I thought, oh, maybe have another couple of hours to do. But uh, he ended up coming to my studio and crashing on the couch for a couple of days. Um, and yeah, we just like worked all night and he cooked us curry and it was real fun and we ended up finishing it to a really good quality. It's called um, Te Po Tuatahi, which is a word or a phrase that's also in the, in the painting, in the lettering up here and it basically is saying te po tuatahi the first po is he whakaputanga or the um, the founding document of Aotearoa which is actually the declaration of independence around um, eight, that was made in 1835. The other text of the painting is the treaty is a tauranga waka. Tauranga is a word for landing place and waka can be metaphorically like a vessel. So in a sense, the treaty is our first immigration document or the, um, the vessel that enabled people to come here. Um, now that it's completed, now that the whole project's completed, I feel sort of armed with new knowledge and I feel very satisfied with the, with the painting. I feel really happy having worked with Pierre and um, basically we've learnt so much and we just wanted to share a bit of that in this work.